measures of financial performance. We have looked at how a business can assess or evaluate its performance over a period of time. It is essential for a business to be able to evaluate its activities or its performance within that time frame in order to make amends or to build on what it has achieved. So a key aspect of measuring a business's performance is the use of ratios. Ratios normally do not mean much if they are used in isolation. You have to add the ratios or interpret it in addition to other factors to be able to make sense to the business. Typically firms or businesses use ratios to accomplish budgetary or control purposes. So if you talk about budget, you look at the previous period, the activities or the expenditures or the, the items that you achieved that can be drawn into figuring out what can transpire or what should be set going forward. So if last year you were able to achieve a revenue target or a revenue measure up to a certain level and measures in the previous period do not differ necessarily from that that is transpiring currently, it will be ideal to build on or just make a little adjustment to the items that you got last year. Ratios can be also used to identify trends. So trends are important for decision making purposes. So if for a period of three years, so we are in 2024. So in 2020, you have a revenue of 500,000. 2021, a revenue of 510,000. 2022, 505,000. 2023, 512,000. So you will be able to deduce that the business's revenue is in a certain margin from 500 to 520, not beyond that. So if a particular period goes beyond or below that established pattern and it significantly differs, then there will be a cause for an investigation. So ratio can also assist for businesses to make proper comparison to competitors and industry benchmarks. If a business picks a raw figure, let's say its revenue of $1 million and compares to an industry player and they make $2 million in that particular period, that comparison is going to misinform the business to think that they are retrogressing. However, they are not taking into cognizance that the $2 million that the rival business has chucked might have increment in related expenditure. The same with its 1 million. So comparatively, their expenditure in relation to that 1 million will be lesser in relation to that of the rival who had the 2 million. So if you pick a ratio, it will produce a figure that will juxtapose the revenue against necessary expenditure for both firms. So you'll be making the comparison on a level playing field and then ignite a meaningful comparison. So we can start by measuring the profitability of a business. So here we are going to assess the business's potential of having its revenue exceeding its various expenditures. There are classes of expenditures that a business will incur. So we'll have the production cost, we can have operational costs, and we can have other expenditures. So we'll start with the gross profit margin. Now the gross profit margin seeks to analyze the business's capacity in having revenue more than its direct expenditure or production costs. So production costs will relate to manufacturing businesses. For service-driven businesses, you can have operational costs. Okay, so the formula for gross profit margin is the gross profit, which is normally revenue less 
the cost of production or the cost of sales or direct cost then you divide by the sales or the revenue now with ratios it becomes meaningful when there is a benchmark for comparison so you can compare to a previous period or previous periods or compare to a set industry target or you can compare to that of a competitor in order to determine whether the business is making progress being stagnated or is retrogressing so if you get a gross profit margin of 15 percent in the current period or the immediate past period and in the prior period you made 14 percent then ordinarily you are making headway you have to investigate to tell whether it is truly as a result of efficiency or there were one of items that accounted for that jump so some of the areas that can help you explain why that margin was received can be in the area of sales so you get a gross profit margin of 15 percent this year and in the previous year you got let's say 17 percent there is a two percent regression so if you want to explain you can look at the sales probably you did less sales in the current period due to maybe economic downturn than the previous year if the expenditure remains constant or it does not drop in the percentage of the of that of the sales your gross profit is going to come down if the reverse is the reality where your gross profit margin for the current year is more than that of the previous year it could be that in the current year there were increases in selling price which would lead to increment in sales value now if that increment in the selling prices there's not much a commensurate increment in the production cost the knockoff is that the gross profit margin is going to go high the other area that you can look into is the production cost of sales if this year's sales was 10 percent more than that of the previous year but the production cost was 15 percent higher than that of the previous year the gross profit margin is going to reduce the next margin we'll be talking about is the operating profit margin and the formula is operating profit otherwise known as profit before interest and tax divided by sales or revenue now apart from production cost there are other expenditures that the business incurs in its operating journey so after you get a gross profit you need to identify whether it was able to capture or it was able to fairly consume the other expenditures so there's no need having a higher gross profits but the other expenditures run it into a loss so the other cost you can have administrative expenditures so the salary to the office staff the accountant the hr the office cleaner so you had a, an operating profit margin and you match it with that of a previous period or against an industry benchmark or that of a competitor and you have a lower one so let's say the current period operating profit margin is 10 percent that of last year was 12 percent you will definitely want to find out what accounted for the differences so one of the areas that you can go into is to look at operating profit so operating profit is basically your gross profit which is the revenue less the direct expenditures or the cost of production and then you less any expenditure that relate to the business's core activity so the marketing expenditures for the product so sales expenditure administrative expenditures when you take those out of the gross profit you get the operating profit now if your revenue for the current year was lower than that of the previous year and your operating expenses is relatively constant it means that you're going to get a lower operating profit than last year and if your sales is also not different from that of last year it means that that is going to account for why you had that drop so you need to find out why your revenue reduced then other areas that you can look into is the various expenditures that lead to the production of the operating profit so your administrative cost could be higher than the previous year you probably increase salaries or you hide more people 
to help augment the operations of the of the business so it will increase your operating expenditures and if that operating expenditure saw an increase not commensurate that you see in revenue that can also account for the drop in operating profit you can also have distribution and marketing cost you might have embarked on a stronger marketing campaign which was absent in the previous year so your operating cost went up and in that regard you achieved a lower operating profit that cost you to have a reduction the reverse can also be true where your sales could have gone higher than the previous year and there are factors that led to the operating profits being higher so your administrative cost might have been handled well in the current period than in the last year or certain items that were deemed not to be relevant were taken off the next one we'll look at is the return on capital employed now this is a ratio that measures profitability of an organization so you basically look at the return on investment on the capital a business invested so when you talk about capital you can have in equity that is shares or debt so people invest in you with the hope of getting the money back those are the foundations that a business runs whatever the medium through which you get your capital know that capital comes at a cost if you have equity investment at the end of the period you must generate enough to pay them dividend if you have people investing into debt you also have to pay them interest at the end of the period that was agreed the formula will be earnings before interest and tax now the difference between earnings before interest and tax and profit before interest and tax is that with profit before interest and tax there are certain values that are notional or non-monetary like depreciation like loss like provisions but with earnings anything in the income statement or anything that is recorded to arrive at the end which is non-monetary will not be featured in here now the capital employed is the sum of the shares plus long-term debt or you can do total assets less current liabilities it should still give you the same answer the next line of the measurement of profitability is the asset turnover so this ratio measures how a business is effective in using its assets to generate revenue so it will come in handy to determine any asset that is invested into the business how it helps the business in its operation so if you invest one asset it needs to generate an increase in its revenue if it does not then the business can look at another thing so the formula is revenue divided by the average total assets available because a business will normally generate revenue with assets without assets the business cannot exist it is the capital that people have invested into the business that were used in the acquisition of the asset so if the revenue that results in the new investment is not appreciable then that investment can be deemed not to be proper let's test our understanding so we look at the profit and loss statement here we have sales cost of goods sold which will give you the gross profit salaries utilities depreciation giving you operating profit or profit before interest and tax you have interest expense income tax and the net profit then you also have the balance sheet or the statement of financial position you have non-current assets current assets together giving you the total assets then you have the share capital you have the reserves you have non-current liabilities then you have current liabilities so the total of the upper column which is the total assets matches that of the equity and the liability so from here if you want to solve for the gross profit margin we've already discussed the formula to be gross profits divided by sales so the gross profit in this question is 6,000 and the revenue is 10,000 pounds so the gross profit margin will give us 60% okay 
that is the 6,000 gross profits divided by 10,000 revenue, multiplied by 100. The next one is the operating profit margin. The formula is operating profit divided by sales. So it will give us an operating profit margin of 25%, which is the operating profit of 2,500 divided by sales of 10,000 multiplied by 100%. The next one is the return on capital employed. The formula is earnings before interest and tax divided by capital. So that will generate 7% return on capital employed. It means that of all the capital invested in the business operation, it yielded a return of 7%. Now the earnings before interest and tax will be the gross profits, less salaries, which is monetary, utilities which is monetary so we exclude the depreciation of the thousand because it is notional it is an estimate provided to reflect the usage of non-current assets so the pbit which is two five the earnings before interest and tax will be three five divided by the capital which will be the share capital plus reserves plus the non-current liabilities which is the fifty thousand or the total asset of 55,000 less current liabilities of 5,000. The last one we look at is the asset turnover, where we look at the amount of revenue generated with regards to the assets invested. The formula is the total sales rigged in over the period divided by the total assets. That will produce 18.18 is to 1. It means that for every asset invested, it led to a sales of 18.18 times of its value.